What's up, what's up? This is Jay Levine. Red Cup Chronicles, Love is Blind, Season 7, Episodes 4 through 6. Sorry, I could be a procrastinator from time to time, so you really have to excuse that. Uh, so we're just going to kick these off. And then uh, by now, you probably have seen 7 through 9. No spoilers. I haven't seen 7 through 9 yet, but I've been seeing other reviews. The Famous Red Cup. So, season seven, episode four, tables have turned because if you watch this episode, it really has. So it starts off with Leo and Hannah breaking up after Leo spats the hell out, right? And the whole time, he was dissing Nick D because Hannah kept on saying that she's in love with him and everything because he was more sure of her than Leo ever was, right? Just... Trying to charge my phone while I'm at it. Ugh. People forget the most important stuff in life sometimes. So, say, uh, are you sure about him or he's just the first person that said that he loved you? Right? And then he turned around trying to propose to Hannah. Talked about, say, you're my only one. I'm in a, I'm in another connection, but I'm right here with you, standing up. He didn't say all that, but you see. Ooh, I ain't gonna lie. Watching Leo snap was triggering a little bit. Cause how many times that a woman get rumored, a woman reject a man for however reason, and man just passes out on her like that. Back to the notes. Back to the notes. Got that part. So he kept on saying that he loved her and all that stuff. And I'm very happy that Hannah saw through that. Kudos to you, Hannah. She looked like one of the people that be at frat parties cutting up. So now you have Marissa and Bodan. Bodan, his name sounds like a Dragon Ball Z character. They talk about book club. They talk about different politics. Kind of like Monica. And Steven. So she dated a Trump supporter for like three years. But she learned from it because she learned to accept differences. Just like previous episodes when Steven admitted to voting for um, Trump because he didn't like Hillary. But he seen the error of his ways. So this time around he voted for Biden. Because his values are more aligned with his. That's how people should vote. Fuck this Democratic, Republic bullshit. You know. And they're having the conversation. Book club. I really thought that she was going to be with uh, Bodan. So you go to Tim and Alex. Tim gave Alex his sister's bracelet. bracelet. It was a sweet gesture because he wanted to carry the memories of his sisters with his marriage. But it's creepy because you only know me for five freaking minutes. Why you give me bracelet that your dad's sister wore before she passed away? Yeah, yes, cat. There go, I see the cat. Whenever she hears me talking, she just gotta be in the mix. Come on, babe. <laughs> me, and she's off my lap again. All right. So they're doing their painting thing and they're bonding and they're relaxing. Conversation about his sisters once again, man. It should have been a shot game every time Tim brought up his sisters. You should have just took a shot for it. You won't be as dr drunkard, but you'll be at least a little bit more than tipsy hearing this man talk about his sisters. So, I skipped on down to uh, Steven and Monica. And I say Steven is so meaty because his height and he has meat on his bones. He looks like a red-headed version of Paul Bunyan. He has some nice thighs. I love nice muscular thighs on a man. And I just found out that I like that particular part of a man's anatomy. Yeah. So Steven ends up proposing to Monica. Monica J. Davis. When you get tired of that last name. 
Will you marry me? Well, I'm waiting 36 years to hear those words from somebody. Shout out to Jesse Wu. I don't know exactly what the hell Jesse Wu meant. When she said what she said about Miles clock was kind of ticking. Because she kept on saying she waited so long to be married. And in a way, I kind of related to her. Because she said she's been bridesmaids. She's shown up for other people. Now it's her time. Now it's her time to reign. So, big ups to Monica. I, I feel you on that one. Because I caught a few bouquets. I'm still sing well, not single. I'm just not married. Let me correct that. So we got Ramses and Marissa when they're discussing astrology, which is one of my favorite topics. Anybody that knows me in real life, yes, I'm going to ask when your birthday. Yes, I'm going to ask what's the possible time of you being born, everything. Because that's the thing us astrology girlies like to do. So what's your, what's your big three? So Ramses is Cancer Leo Leo, which means he's a Cancer sun with a Leo moon with a Leo rising. Sun is how you see yourself. Moon with your emotions and rising is how other people see you. That's astrology, crash 101 at best. So she loves it. She's like, ooh, Cancer Leo Leo. I forgot her moon sign stuff because they did that on Astrology Island on Instagram. But she is an Aries sun. That I can say. Bonan, she, he's very confident. Remember, that's one of the love triangles that's going on. So she ends up breaking up for Bodan for Ramses. And Bodan was like, no hard feelings. He took it very mature, very gentleman life, very demure. So... You know, that's part of that. So, we goes back to the women's quarters when Hannah tells Brittany about how he's reacting, acting like a kid. When it came to that breakup. And he gonna try to tell people that he broke up with Hannah. When, really, Hannah broke up with him because of Nick D. Leo discusses his side of the story and he apologized to Hannah for his outburst because that man was giving me Joe from you vibes the way he snapped. So, that's a good start. Acting like a 30 year old kid, but apology is apology. Now, you want to say he has feelings for Brittany. When Brittany was the second choice. And during the breakup with Hannah, he was like, can you please tell Brittany that it was mutual? Basically, try to cover up, make him... He didn't want to look like the bad guy. And he kept on going on and on. And I was like, shoot, that's y'all business. What the, what, what they got to do with me? Leo's Aries and Hannah, she's an Aquarius. And I find out that Brittany's a Cancer. That's why she want to be the housewife. You got to be a housewife. At least learn how to cook. Because she was on a date with this guy, Tamar. That you didn't see that much. He was this bulky, bald, black guy with glasses. Uh, what can you cook? Smoothies. She literally said that, y'all. <laughs> so, Hannah was trying to give Brittany the lowdown. Like, look, I don't know. He's basically a con artist. Like, tread lightly when it comes to him. Red cup. So, you go back to Tim and Alex showing off their paintings towards each other, conversating, conversing. That's the correct word, conversing. And he read this letter that was addressed to his father, basically asking for Alex's hand in marriage. And Alex thanked him. He proposed it. She said, yeah. So, we got another proposal popping. So, Stephen and Monica had a reveal. And I did say the part about how she showed for others. They kissed. They had chemistry. He's blown away by her. 
one of those because have you ever dated black women before? And is does that make him black since he found out that he was Nigerian and all the African countries and stuff? Dumb question, but you know. You can see he gets tan easy. So after the reveal, you go back to Marissa and Ramsey. When you watch Love is Blind, they go back and forth between dates if you never watched it before. We're at Ramsey's and Marissa when they're discussing Bodon. I found that weird because earlier Ramsey's was pretty common. Like, ooh, I, ooh, I don't care if somebody likes somebody I like. But they're discussing Bodon. And I thought that was a little bit weird. Especially for a date when you're trying to get to know each other. And they talk about their common ground. They talked about their fit. Stating concerns about the heart. His big concern, well, we may get to that later on. So, you go to Nick and Hannah. They conversing about their feelings. And he proposed to Hannah and she said yes. To me, I felt that Nick D was more genuine than Leo. Leo, he just wanted to, every five minutes want to tell folks that he got money. He got that money on. And I'm like, I don't know about that. So I'm happy that she chose Nick D instead of Leo. If you see, that's my cat. She's she trying to be in the mix. Wish she would just sit on my lap instead of just running around and stuff. Yes, I'm talking about you, cat. No, that's water. That's not that's not food or anything like that. <laughs> so Nick D's very uh genuine. Tim and Alex had a reveal and Alex said that she's a thick fatty. To me, size wise, I'm not calling those girls fat, but I will call them like little meaty than the other girls. Hannah and Alex Give me the same vibe. The white version and black version. Like they're tall. They're curvy women. Got more meat than bones. They're not like a size zero model type. But they're models anyway. You know. My own uh, way of describing. So. Tim and Alex. I keep on trying to call this girl Alexis. It's Alex. So when she comes out. He's like. Oh my God, he was excited. Nah, you need a man that's excited about seeing you down here all the time. And I thought that was so cool. So, I watched this guy, Takes Tape. He's a guy from New York. He does Love is Blind uh, reviews also. And I thought it was Tyler. But it was really Tim, the one who had a boner. And it was like close up with Tim trying to uh, adjust himself. <laughs> so he looked at her. Oh, you got a nose ring. My oldest sister had a nose ring. Red freaking flag. You cannot put a time limit on grieving. But you're trying to be married. You're trying to get to know a lovely young lady, sir. I get it. Because I talk about my mom at times. But that's more of an intimate conversation. Not a conversation that you have when you propose it to somebody. Matter of fact, if you have, feel that way, Tim. Incorporate your sisters in a wedding. Like how they pour the little sand and stuff for the loved ones that are deceased, passed away. Unalive. And he was talking about some. I got the dog in me. He kept on saying he got the dog in him. And for somebody that whole grown up 30 something year old age. That's not cute. Mm -mm. I would have been turned off. And Alex was. She was like No. I don't like that. I love that you hate the dog. 
one thing about Virgo men, they would do any and everything to get on your nerves, to test your boundaries. Just to see how far they go with you. Keep in mind, I got two more episodes <laughs> to talk about. Go to Leo Brittany. Expresses their feelings. She reads letter. Reflection. And that's all she wrote for season 7. Episode 4. If I didn't write that much, it was nothing special happened. And I try to write key points in my notes. So you go to season 7. Episode 5 is called What the Duck? <laughs> if you watch the episode, you know what the duck was. Starts off with Leo and Brittany. I know you like hearing me say, hearing that I love you. That is so diabolical. Diabolical. You're playing on this young lady's feelings. Oh man, <laughs> Brittany was whiskey. I thought that last name was worse, so I wrote that in my note. He proposes and she said yes. And uh, that type of love triangle between him, Hannah, and um, Brittany, it reminds me of Zach Blitz and Irina from season four. And the way Leo was, uh, I want to say... A little bit of Tim with the trauma stuff, but the charm from Leo reminds me of Clay from season six. I've been watching this from the beginning. Yes, I love love stories and I like hot mess, so here we are. Nick and Hannah had a reveal. She was kind of insecure about his size, her size, and I see what Jesse would mean by that. And they seem more like, they kiss, but they seem more like homies. And he, you could tell uh, between Nick and Hannah, Nick liked Hannah more than the other way around. <laughs> Which is usually how it goes, but Hannah ain't trying to fake the fact that she don't like him. <laughs> and you could tell she is so disinterested in him because he talked about athletic football player. So she was expecting like... Big old quarterback, linebacker, mug. He was a kicker. So Nick is short, around the same height or shorter than Hannah. And Hannah was expecting something like Aaron Hernandez size. So there's some distance there. She could trick she did critique take his size because of the whole football thing. It was like fantasy. I can see why people... Alright, so now we're at Marissa and Ramsey's. I can see why people would question his masculinity. Because everybody have a feminine and masculine in them. But he's not that macho type. Like, he didn't... Um, Ramsey, Ramsey's don't mind being a stay-at-home dad while Brittany do the work. Some people might say Brittany... I mean, not Brittany. Marissa. So, some people might say if Marissa were the pants of that relationship and stuff. Have a conversation. He ain't feeling the fact that Marissa's in the military and he was like it was a deal breaker if she go if she enlists herself again. Now Ramsey's proposed and Marissa, all you gotta do is say yes. And that's what exactly what Marissa did, baby. Uh, so, Leo and Brittany had that reveal. They look more like a purple couple. The Barbie doll and the rich guy. I could see Leo with his Porsche with Brittany like, <laughs> Smoothies, everyone. She said, ah. And then, what gave you a clue was when Love is blind, but am I a little vain? 
That was a clue about them. <laughs> it seems innocent, but she kept pulling away from him because Leo was Pepe Le Pew in that girl. You know when Leo talked, mm, and then she was like, like that cat was doing. That's exactly what happened. It was cringe to see. Gives her the jacket. How does it feel to be engaged? You can ask that, but it was the way Leo asked. <laughs> After that, went to Marissa and Ramsey's reveal. I'm sorry, Ramses still looks like an 80s breakup, 80s break dancer. He really does look like an 80s break dancer. Okay. They digging each other. They're eccentric, intense kids. Everything. So, the host, Nick and Vanessa Lachey, announces only six couples are heading to Cabo, which was kind of strange. And you see Taylor, it goes to Taylor and Garrett. Shows off their scientific tats. They're all nerdy and stuff. Tyler and Ashley A. Discusses her celibacy. Hannah, she had a lot to process after first meeting Nick. Tim and Alex had a little banter. Eyesight, glasses. I'll tell y'all about these Virgo men. They like banter. But they got to beat you at the banter or their ego's going to be bruised. And I already went over the Ramses. They ain't feeling that whole military thing. Which you were kind of, like, like I said, um, I don't think Ramsey is plays for the same side of the team. He does play for the opposite side, if y'all get what I'm talking about. He's just one of those guys. Flexible. Who's more in touch with his femininity? There's nothing wrong with that. You, you might call him the B word. He might shoot, sucker punch you a little bit, you know? <laughs> Never judge a person by a cover, book by a cover. Um, Monica and Steven were feeling euphoric, but she was judging him for being an electrician, which is a pretty lucrative career. Steven, he's ready for her. He's Little Caesars. He's hot and ready. Dig and Monica. Like, oh, you're so beautiful. Mm. Taylor and Garrett talk about expectations. And you see Tyler and Ashley, A, in the pool. <sighs> Wait till the end of this episode. And Tyler, I'm telling you, out of all the guys, I'll be more. I'm attracted to Tyler. The tattoos. Low haircut. I'm a little attracted to Steven because of his big, bulky, Paul Bonnie size. And Tamar, he looked like a ta Tamar, you didn't see him much, but if you look through the different previews and the different pictures of the cast, you would see Tamar. And you got Taylor and Garrett. Well, I said that already. So, he asked her by her. Very attractive. Ask her by her name. Blink twice. Which was kind of telling. Tim brings Alex some food. Who's bossy between Virgo and Leo? And they explain that their temperament may be a challenge and everything. Dog, this dog. He kept on talking about the dog. And Alex wanted to smack him. And I did too. Nick is telling Hannah that he never, Hannah never cried for him. She said, F no about tattoo. Talk ish about Nick's appearance, all this stuff. And she is still criticizing his looks, but they were more intimate in the pod. Apparently, Carrie liked to sleep with mouth, mouth tape, which is scotch tape. You just cross the mouth breathing, I guess, to prevent snoring. Uh, I've heard of sleep pet like sleep machines, stuff like that with the breathing. But I never seen somebody put duct tape across the mouth. 
So that was something that was kind of like, hmm, more you know. Yes, baby. I'm, I'm going to do this while she's on me, too. You got Ashley Todd praying again. And they jump bones after that whole celibacy thing with, Al I mean, Ashley. If I mix up their names, please excuse me in advance. And let me introduce to y'all, I, Celine. This is your first TV appearance. How do you feel? Aww. Uh, Icy made her first appearance. Her first YouTube appearance. So. <laughs> Monica and Steven were chilling. And Monica was whispering like the Yin Yang twins. <laughs> Shrek up. <laughs> Tim and Alex were discussing each other's feelings and they kissing on each other. <laughs> Hannah and Fick, Nick also talked about their feelings. Marissa and Ramsey's sex is good. Marissa, she's she's such a horn dog. That I love that for her. Hannah, the love dog, don't want to take a swan for a while. Right. Oh, it was that scene about Nick and Hannah. All right, they were chilling, and Nick wanted to play around. He wanted to ride on the little swan or whatever, right? And Hannah's like, that's such the ick. Oh, my God. She was being a party pooper, and Nick was trying to make the best of the trip in Cabo. It's for 